Ahead, Liberty students construct Lessons for Life. And we thumb through the marks left by CTE Center students. This and more coming up. Frisco ISD TV starts now. Welcome to this week's episode of Frisco ISD TV. I'm Jamie Miller. And I'm Sam Stockard. Glad you could join us as we bring you stories from around the district. In It's Elementary, My Dear, I went to Bright Elementary where they're hungry for a change in the community. There's a cake program at Bright Elementary that's taking a slice out of crimes against children. We've got the ingredients on how it was made. I'm sort of sick and tired of seeing all the um, reports on the news about bad things happening to kids and uh, seeing what I thought was you know, a complacent community, if you will. And I really thought that um, somebody needed to do something. And so instead of looking for someone else to do it, I asked myself the question, why not me? CAKE stands for Crimes Against Kids Eliminated, and students are given a whistle as a tool to use against predators. Sometimes kids don't have a voice when something happens. Sometimes they're so paralyzed they can't think. But at least they could at least blow, blow something. And if they were able to blow a whistle, that would at least maybe startle the stranger for just a second, throw them off their game, and give the child an opportunity to run away. Or at least, you know, get the attention of the people who are in the surrounding area and get them to see what's going on and intervene. Parents see the whistle as a way to keep their kids safe. A whistle is an excellent tool to help him in case he is approached, whether it's at the park, it might not even be walking home from school. He might be playing at the park in an environment that we consider safe, but predators can be anywhere. And they look for areas that they think kids are gonna be playing safely so that they can go interrupt or attempt to violate them or anything and so a whistle is an excellent idea it is one tool and the rest of it is for us as parents to be looking out for all the children that's what kids can relate to and it's easy simple instructions so i think um one of the things that was very helpful for me and other parents they said when they sent the whistles home inside was a packet of different options that children can have depending on what the situation is and so, although we've given them to the children, they love the whistle idea. Parents that may not know what to do, that haven't seen a workshop, they weren't really aware of some options to give their children, they're now empowered as well um, with that information to share with their children. Founder Dana Jones feels that with this program, the community can make a difference. And so I thought if we could really develop an organization made up of community leaders, of parents, um, if we could unite, we could really do uh, some really awesome work within our own communities to keep our children safe. And that's, that's the passion. Parents and students alike seem to approve of the idea. I was thrilled because I firsthand understand the importance of prevention of many different issues, but particularly of uh, violent acts against children. I thought it's a fantastic idea. Anything for protecting our kids, I'm all for it. And I think this is a great idea. We take a community approach and we all look out for all the kids in our community, especially at this school, but all around the neighborhood and all around Frisco. It's a great idea. It's a good idea because it makes children feel much, much safer. I feel safer because if somebody's um, trying to like hurt you or try to take you, then you just blow the whistle and tell somebody. Cake hopes to be in other schools in the upcoming years, but now they're starting with Bright. One whistle at a time. Sam Stockard, Frisco ISD TV. Seems like a great way to keep students safe. Great story, Sam. Thanks. I guess you could say it was a piece of cake. <laughs> students and teachers at Clark Middle School come together to help a special group of peers, proving that education is for everyone. Alyssa Herzog has more in the middle of it all. Ability is not a factor in this one-of-a-kind class as these students learn without limits. 
the name of the program is Active Learning, and it is custom for children with cognitive disabilities. This classroom is different from the typical classroom in an educational setting in that the cognitive developmental level of the students is not in sync with their chronological age. And it's wonderful to have a program in place that will allow individual needs to be satisfied as opposed to just a great appropriate curriculum. As a typical eighth grader may be studying literature, we still do literature, but it's a le at a level that they can understand and at a level that they can build upon. With a total of three students, Jefferson has help in providing one-on-one -on -one education. I have an awesome team of two assistants. There's no way that I could do this by myself. Some common misconception is that the kids um, do not learn, but they definitely do. Um, even though they're at lower cognitive level, they learn things, simple things like rolling over that we take for granted or eye contact that we take for granted. They learn that, um, they learn that through routine. We also have a schedule that lets us know any given day, any class period, who's working with each student and on what they're working with the student on. The team effort doesn't stop there. Students from around the school pitch in to help their peers. In the morning, I go to their classroom and I pick them up and roll them down to home ec and they, I sit with them and try to make them laugh and hang out with them the period. So we like to add them to our conversations and let them play with us and talk with us and laugh and be our friends. I enjoy taking them to the classroom and seeing a smile on their face. I push Brandon to class um, and then I push him back from after class and I also take notes for him in class and um, I eat with him during lunch some days. Students enjoy volunteering for the active learning class. Because it's something I like, interacting with people, and I think it's the right thing to do. I feel they should be treated the same way that everyone should be treated. They have a good time, and I have a good time, and I enjoy when they laugh because it makes me feel really good. Clark Middle School comes together to ensure every student is included in the overall school experience. Students in the active learning class will journey to a new level when they enter the program at Heritage High School. I'm Alyssa Herzog for Frisco ISD TV. Thanks, Alyssa. Do you ever sit in class and wonder, when am I ever going to use this? Well, in higher learning, students at Liberty are building their own lessons. And making them relate to life. Millicent Messina has the story. At Liberty High School, construction is underway with students in the classroom. However, they're not in harm's way. They're building their future. SCL is uh, self-constructed learning. You have to come up with your own um, resources and your own knowledge as far as uh, your assignments and work. And so we want to make sure that our students, when they leave here, are fully prepared to do that, both in college and whatever they choose to do in their career. Math teacher Amy Grenier sees her job as making sure students are on the right path. In the SEL classroom, I play the role of the facilitator. I help students stay on track, go in the right direction, but it's ultimately their goal to find their way. But I just kind of, I'm a guide for them to find their way to where they need to be. Science teacher Naraja Chetty believes a lack of structure constructs how the classroom operates. Today can be a little chaotic, but that's kind of a good thing, I think, is that they kind of they they kind of design our classroom procedures in that respect but if you could see in here there was some that were working on the computers there were some that were back here on the microscopes um, that kind of stuff it gives them the opportunity to say to kind of manage their own time I know I've got a few things I need to accomplish today I'm gonna work on this for a while I'm gonna go back there and work on that for a while um, so while it looks like chaos hopefully they know what they're doing well enough to be able to follow up and, and accomplish all of their goals for a day students seem to prefer the SDL classroom over traditional learning in this class we have a lot of projects and different um, things working as a group and other classes it's more quiet and not so many projects and that kind of stuff. I like it because we do a lot of uh, like active um, like classwork. And this class is fun because there's experiments. You actually get to do something in this class so I just learn and sit down all the time. Math teacher Sherry Sapp feels students benefit from the SEL experience. 
SCL benefits the students in so many ways. Students get the opportunity to collaborate with one another. They get the opportunity to create and be innovative with projects. They get the opportunity to be part of a community. And they um, get to use their integrity as they um, form these projects with their new and creative ideas and build their classroom experience. Um, instead of it always coming from the teacher, they get to build and be part of the learning environment. Self-constructed learning helps students in the classroom prepare for the real world by teaching them independence in their decision making. I'm Melissa Messina for Fisco ISD TV. Thanks, Millicent. In High Tech Happenings, CTE students are collecting clues on how to decipher one-of-a-kind prints. Here's Jemai Harris with more. These students are making an impression and no two are the same. They're dusting up the clues and collecting the evidence. We're exposing them to the beginning parts of forensics, which is fingerprint identification that we use in solving crime scenes. DeBoer's class created their own crime lab where students were able to learn by taking part in the fingerprinting process. We were fingerprinting and one person was the suspect and they had to get fingerprinted and the other person was the officer and they were helping the person get fingerprinted. Students in the forensic science class are getting hands-on experience that is preparing them for the workplace. We have the forensic science lab here and then we have all the uh, tools uh, that we use to collect the fingerprints. Basically four different areas that we can collect fingerprints. We use fingerprint powder, we use nahydrin, which is a chemical spray. We can also use silver nitrate, and we can use iodine fuming as well, and then also super glue fuming. I really enjoyed the fingerprinting. I actually got fingerprinted myself. It was just really fun. The goal is to channel the inner detective in each student so that they will develop a love for forensics that will carry over into a successful career. Hopefully that they'll go into the legal uh, justice system, criminal justice system, and become a forensic uh, scientist. Uh, that's our hopes. I just enjoy the crime scenes. I watch NCIS and all those shows. I really, that would be something I would like to do in the future. Although today's investigation may be over, these students still have much more to learn. I'm Jemai Harris for Frisco ISD TV. Just in case you wanted to know, I got first place in my third grade science fair for my fingerprint project. You always got to bring it back to you, don't you, Sam? Ouch. Frisco ISD has growing pains as more students move into the area. Erica Mackler maps out the changes. The big difference, of course, is the growth and uh, not getting to know everybody that I I used to. Not only do kids grow, but so did the school districts that serve them. Briscoe ISD has experienced much of this throughout the years. Uh, this is my 15th year and uh, we've grown from 3,700 students uh, to over 40,000 students in the last 15 years. I've been here 25 years. Uh, my first year of teaching in the 80s, we only had, uh, started out at Frisco Middle School, we only had one middle school. And then when I moved up to the high school, five years later, we only had one high school, and we had about 300 in the high school. Frisco ISD currently has 30 elementary schools, 12 middle schools, and six high schools, and some are now bursting at the seams. Each year we're getting more and more students, just as everybody else, and our freshman class and sophomore classes are much bigger than our senior class and our junior class, so um, in the next two years we'll be around 2,000 students. We opened in 2008, we opened just a little over 600 and today we have over 850 students. We've grown every year and uh, you see that all across the district. We have grown by 100 students every year consistently. We are nearing the 1200 mark as far as student population. We have around 1185 students currently here at Fowler which is um, the largest middle school that has ever existed here in Frisco ISD. Campuses are doing different things to accommodate greater numbers of students. We do have um, portables that have been brought in to accommodate our growth. And band members at Scoggins are turning to closets to squeeze in their musical notes. 
Well, definitely we've had to use our space a little more efficiently uh, than we have in the past. The opening of three new elementary and one middle school in 2012 and a new high school in 2013 will provide some relief. We will lose approximately 20% of our population about um, when the new school opens. Uh, we'll lose a good portion of what is Craig Ranch just north of here. So um, we'll lose whatever students who would go to Scoggins Middle School. We will lose those to the new school that will open. It will definitely uh, help our class sizes and help us to uh, be better able to use our space. At least one of the four elementary campuses that feed into Fowler Middle School um, will be routed over to Van Deventer Middle School. Bledsoe, who's taught in the district for many years, sees benefits. Uh, when we started creating separate schools, we started to have uh, district rivalries, which was good, um, but it also allowed a lot of kids to participate in uh, activities that they wouldn't normally be able to participate in. In addition, Frisco ISD has the Career and Technical Education Center. And when they opened the CTE Center, it allowed a lot of opportunities for kids to take classes that they wouldn't normally take. Matter of fact, a lot of classes we offer, they have to wait till they get to college. And uh, of course, that's very helpful to let them decide what career they're going to choose. Campus sizes are being adjusted as a result of growth. The fast growth, we've had to look at uh, expanding those numbers a little bit. The elementary right now is 760. Middle school, we try to keep it to uh, 1,000, uh, but we uh, do have some schools with over 1,000. And then the high schools, we've recently uh, are expanding uh, to 2,100. Frisco ISC is dealing with the growth by opening new campuses and reworking the number of students each school can accommodate. More people equals more smiles for Frisco ISD to share. I'm Erica Mackler for Frisco ISD TV. That wraps up our show. Join us next time to see what Staley students got in the mail. And we take a look at a principal's office that's far from the norm. Be sure to check it out. I'm Sam Stockard. And I'm Jamie Miller. Thanks for watching.